Hey guys, it's Albert. I just got done watching the new first episode of the new season of Z Nation, season two. Holy crap, am I excited? Mostly for the potential, okay? I'm just going to put that out there because this episode for me was not the strongest episode of Z Nation, but it sets up things. That I'm very, very excited for. I'm going to recap it a little bit. Tell you guys my thoughts. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Um, I thought it was a really interesting way to pick up from the cliffhanger, if you will, from last season. Last season we had the giant cliffhanger. I mean, the first time I saw it, I remember just being like mad. Like, no! You were not allowed to nuke all of our favorite characters! And then just, like, leave the nukes hanging in the air and... Drop it and say, oh yeah, wait a year now, and we'll see what happens next. That is not cool! (sighs) But that's what they did. So that's what we had to deal with. And honestly, I feel just a little bit cheated. Just a little bit cheated by how inconsequential the nukes ended up being. I know that they changed things, and they they changed some really interesting things, but... I mean, these are nukes. It's not a nuke. It's multiple, like, mutually assured destruction stuff going on. And yet, we have, you know, oh, we we see a little ash falling from the sky. Hmm. We'll have a couple guys mention every once in a while, there's some radiation over this way, guys. Don't go over there. it's, It's not that I wanted anybody to die. Don't get me wrong. But with that giant cliffhanger to... To bring it back that way was a little bit too tidy for my tastes. Um, And I know why they did it. And I don't really begrudge them having done it the way they did it. But it just seemed a little too easy. Mac and Addy getting back together. I know that's going to have big emotional fallout later. The fact that she kind of betrayed him and left. And and, and the actors there are spot on sort of portraying their kind of rift between them where they're together, but they're not really back together like we love to see them together. Um, So I thought that kind of didn't work for me. Uh, I wanted more from the nukes. I wanted more from the Sisters of Mercy. I thought there was a lot more that you could have done with that. But on the other side, on the flip side, the good side of that is... That could have dragged on. That whole, like, oh, he has to get her out of the Sisters of Mercy, she's there. There is a certain charm to just saying, all right, boom, we're going forward. This is what happened. It's done. It's in the past. They're going to deal with it now, and we're moving forward. And I like that about Z Nation. It's not a slow show at all. Uh, And I I don't want them to change that. Uh, This is why I like Z Nation over The Walking Dead by a mile, because... Z Nation sets its sights on something and it goes there in a particular episode. And this being the first episode of the season needed to set up some stuff. Uh, it couldn't go off in some of the crazy directions that we know the show can go from say- having seen the first season. Uh, but even even with the limitations of being a first episode and having to wrap things up, a lot of stuff got really exciting. Uh, I guess I'll start with Murphy. I'm not, well, yeah, I'll start with Murphy. Why the heck not? I was going to start with Citizen Z, but screw it. Murphy. Um, really coming into his own. I think that this iteration of Murphy is is a payoff of everything we started to see in Season 1. And I always thought, the interesting thing about Murphy in Season 1 is I always got the idea that he sort of doesn't see that much difference between the humans and the zombies. Um, that was never spelled out explicitly in season one, but just the way that he acted and the way that he talked a couple times, he asks him not to kill a zombie because he feels for him. There's the one time, there's that scene in the first season where he completely, it, from one perspective, he totally screws that family over, right? He takes their water, he leaves the door open, he lets the zombified dad in to eat them. And you get to the end of that episode, man, that I, that episode was just nuts with where that went. However, from Murphy's perspective, I think that he 
could justify that to himself as reuniting the family with the father. And because he, again, he sees the zombies as something other than just monsters. He's in the dividing line, right? He's the bridge between the living and the dead. And he doesn't see the dead as that much different than the living. So him, we, we really see a lot of that in now where he's interacting with the dead. He is sexually active with the dead a little bit. Not to the, not totally going at it, but like, I mean, the, you know what I'm talking about? The, the weird zombie stripper joint place that he has running for himself because he now can, can telepathically control zombies. Like if, if, if Murphy's not going to the place where he sees zombies as just as viable as humans, I don't know what the point of all this is. I really, really think that this show is leading up to a revelation that there's still something inside of those zombies. And that's what Murphy's connecting with. Um, I don't know exactly how that's going to play out. Maybe they're not conscious. It's going to, it just, it's, this seems like the kind of show that would totally screw over all of the main characters by saying, oh yeah, hey, remember all of those zombies that you were just killing, quote unquote, giving them mercy? Yeah, turns out we could have healed them and they were conscious inside the whole time and just had no control over their actions. So thanks for that. All of your friends that you killed and the people that died along the way that you had to shoot, you could have let them, you know, get the vaccine. And in many cases, this is, you know, they didn't have a choice, but still, it, uh, I think that Z Nation is the type of show that would be willing to go there in, like, season three or four, like, after you've seen, like, 10K gets to 10,000 kills and realize, oh, oh, 10,000 people that I just murdered. That's great. Um, but, so, I, I think that Murphy's playing that out. I don't... I don't really like this iteration of Murphy because Murphy's a douchebag and we all know he's a douchebag. But when he's with the group and when he's reined in, he becomes more palatable. When he's got full reign to be Murphy with no restraints, he's unsufferable. Okay, like I I this episode made me dislike Murphy maybe more than any other episode. And his cockiness is still fun. It's still neat to see him, you know, hey, it's the apocalypse, baby, yeah! And and doing his weird thing. Uh, and the scene in the thrift store, or the clothing store, or whatever that was, was hilarious with the zombies with all the hats on them. <laughs> I don't... Like, that imagery was just amazing. Him just, like, throwing clothes onto the zombies that are falling around. Like, he's got these, like, groupie zombies that he has helping him out. Um... Uh, and him getting his new outfit was, of course, a lot of fun. But you got it, like, there is a level of Murphy that's like, okay, yeah, he's sort of fun, but he's also really a douchebag. And the show doesn't let you forget it, I think for good reason, but he, I liked him more in season one when it seemed like he might be forming a bond with the group. And I want to see a little bit more of that happen again. I I don't want to hate Murphy. I don't want to hate anybody in the show, but I really don't want to get to the point where I'm just like, Murphy, you suck. In a real way. Like, yeah, Murphy sucks, but let's be able to enjoy him in spite of how much of a douchebag he is. Um, The other, I think, really big twist, I don't know, twist isn't the right word, but the big narrative change we got was with Citizen Z. And I thought that was I, I'm I'm interested to see where they're going with that. Citizen Z was one of the more fun parts of season one, and it was because of his sort of lackadaisical, I have all the power, nobody can touch me because this is the frozen zombie north, you know, all the zombies are corpsicles. Um I'm up here with my infinite food supply and my access to all of the backed up internet And, you know, all of the broadcasting software in the world, I am totally good. And that was a lot of fun for season one. I'm glad they changed it. I'm glad that they're not, I I don't, this is not the kind of show that feels like it has to hang on to the status quo. Uh, And and changing that with the nuke, that was one of the better (laughs) fallout, literally, uh, fallout consequences of the nuke going off was that Citizen Z is now 
stuck somewhere in this, like, he has to survive now. Like, it's not him just kicking it back with his dog. The zombies are coming after him. All of his equipment's screwed. Uh, he's going at it with a baseball bat. He's not particularly effective with the rifle. I mean, he knows how to sort of handle himself, but he's not popping headshots like 10K. He's up there struggling to survive. And I'm, I, I don't... I'm not ready to see him die yet, but I'm I'm curious how much more effective he can be because obviously he puts out the bounty on Murphy and that's the only, like that's we're sort of given to believe that that's the last gasp of his broadcast career that he probably is not going to be just going on the air and spinning records for the survivors anymore. Murphy is and I'm sorry, not Murphy, uh, Citizen Z that that era of Citizen Z is coming to an end. I really don't want Citizen Z as a character to come to an end, but he's so far off geographically, it doesn't make sense for him to meet up with the other group. Um, He's facing off against zombies, so there's stuff that they can do. I'm sure there's unveilings and like, oh, there's another base and he he has to get to, or he can, you know, fly an airplane somewhere. There's a lot of different narrative directions they can take with that. But I really am glad that they they let that happen, that they let all of that fall apart. Um, as far as everybody else goes, Doc being wounded, I'm not terribly worried about. Uh, you know, he's just... He'll get better eventually, I think. I, I You know, again, this show is really unpredictable, and that's why I love it. Uh, but it doesn't seem like if they wanted to kill him, they could have killed him. It's not, there's no point just like, well, he got infected and now you're going to die over the course of three episodes and there's nothing we can do. And it doesn't mean anything there. I, I have confidence that he'll be back to being regular doc here in a little while. And he's basically regular doc. <laughs> that shot of him in 10 K through the zombies eyeball. Hi, great stuff. Um, Cassandra is a little bit of a, an enigma to me because I was originally under the impression that if Murphy bit you, you were going to basically be immune. Like I assumed that if Murphy bit you, you became like Murphy, you became the, you know, you might kind of be decaying a little bit by little bit. You might eventually turn out like patient zero unable to die, but still fully conscious, man. How horrifying was that in (laughs) the end of season one? Um, but I, like, what she is, is something different, or her mind isn't all there anymore, she's sort of, like, almost like she's accepted some of Murphy into her, and it didn't really fully jive, um, so she's sort of, I don't, I don't know, I'm, I'm a little bit nervous, I think that they have enough taste to not make it as distasteful as I feel like it could go, I don't really want to see her be his half zombie love slave person. Really not into that as as a character <laughs> development for her. As much sense as it might make with him being able to control zombies and her being part zombie and him being lecherous scum, you know. Uh but I guess we'll see where that goes. Obviously, the big hook at the very end, the zombie or whatever half zombie baby is that's we'll see how that plays out. The interesting thing to me is I'm not I don't know what the agenda there is if there is an agenda because when you go back to that I just right before the season started I rewatched all of season one um, to get through and that hookup feels kind of out of nowhere and not out of nowhere in the sense that like we'll just randomly put people having sex in the show because you want to have people having sex like it wasn't. It wasn't titillating or anything. It was just, she, like, she came out on a mission. I've got food, I'm sexy, gonna bang the half zombie guy. And I don't, like, she's with the Sisters of Mercy, I I don't think they have information about Murphy, so it doesn't make sense for her to have some kind of agenda through them, but she's still alive when they all died, I, I, I'm very curious what, if anything, all of that means. Maybe she's just in a compound full of women and she really wanted to have sex with somebody and Murphy was the guy that struck her fancy and, you know, now she's knocked up. 
but it seemed like there was more going on there, and I'm really, really curious to see where that's going. And we'll find out next week. Um, so I'm going to hopefully be able to do these every week uh, for every episode of Z Nation. I'll be out of town at the end of, Oct- or end of September, so we'll see how that works. But for now, this is my plan. Loving it so far. Loving what they're setting up. If you guys watched the first episode, second season, let me know what you thought in the comments. If you have any further insight to what's going on with these guys, or if you feel like I missed something, please let me know. If you like the video, hit like, hit subscribe, and I'll see you next week with more Z Nation Recap. Bye.